Hey everyone, welcome back to Body Ham and Soaps. My name is Darlene. I am the owner and creator of Body Ham and Soaps, and the whole goal of this channel is to help fellow creators create. So today's video, we are going to go over making a bath salt recipe. It is called my Muscle Mixology Bath Soak. Um, you guys can use this to create your own, um, your own essential oil blends, all of those types of things. Um, I do have a video coming up very soon on how to blend fragrance oils. I am working on getting that together for you guys, so look forward to that. But for today, we're going to make some bath salts. So there's a few, I get a lot of questions about bath salts. It's actually a very popular thing right now. Um, bath salts, essential oils, they're very big, um, which is good, um, but there's a lot to learn about the simple little things, as simple as bath salts seem. Um, when we don't mix them properly, we get lumps and chunks. Um, you guys have probably opened up a container of Epsom salts, for instance, and you go to get it out of the tub and there's big, huge lumps of it in there. That's because those types of salts draw moisture to them. And when they draw moisture to them, they like to clump together. And we really don't want to see that in our product. Um, when people pour this out of a, you know, a container or, um, I mean, I package it in bags like this. Um, there is containers like this um, that I also use for some of mine, especially floral ones. Um, you guys have seen the video I did with the uh, herbal bath shots. Um, in the test tube. So there's all different types of ways that you can package this um, that look really nice. But when you go, this I always package with a scoop, you want them to be able to scoop it out and not be this hard lump. You know, these are a little bit that lumps can be broke up and stuff, but we want something that is pleasant for the people to use it that doesn't seem, we want it to look professional. That's what I'm trying to say, right? So there's certain ways that we go through doing that. Um, and that's what I'm going to provide for you today. Now you can take this recipe and you can make it your own. You can change the salts that are in it. You can change the essential oils that are in it. You could add botanicals to this. However, if I was going to add botanicals to this, um, I might go back and watch that other bath salt video that I did um, because I actually bake those um, and creates a chemical reaction in the salt, which prevents the herbs from, you know, how they kind of color and turn kind of brownish color. When you start putting your dry herbs in and stuff, you really want to make sure that you've got that that dry consistency and stuff. So I do my herbal ones a different way. You guys can go back and watch that video. Um, but today we're not putting any herbs in here or botanicals. This recipe that I'm sharing with you today is meant for relaxing and easing sore, stiff muscles. Whether that be that you went extra hard at the gym and you're just trying to alleviate the strain and the stiffness in your muscles or whether it be arthritis or anything like that, this is designed to have the minerals and the essential oils to try and relieve some of the tension in the muscles and provide some relief to that. So that is the purpose of this recipe, but you can keep that in uh, change it in any way that you see fit as far as essential oils, salts, that type of stuff. Now there's a few ingredients that I would never exchange. Um, one would be my dendritic salt. Now there's one thing about this, this is what's going to prevent, as I was talking about, that whole lumpiness in your bath salt and them sticking together and attracting moisture. Um, this is the trick ingredient right here. This is what you should be putting in there. It helps prevent lumps. It holds on to a lot of moisture but does not clump together. It is the perfect addition into all bath salts. Now in this one, um, I do use 200 grams, in, but you could get away with using 100 grams. But that's going to be your very first ingredient. So we have 200 grams of the dendritic salt. And hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. I will put it up on the screen so you guys can see how it's spelled. And it is more of a powder consistency. You can see here, let's move you guys a little closer. So you can definitely see how this is more of a powder form than say our salts. 
right? This will hold a whole lot of moisture in it um, and prevent the lumping. It, it prevents your salts from lumping together and creating that stickiness that we get in salts once especially once we add a carrier oil for our essential oils and we add in our essential oils and then of course our poly uh sorbate 80 right so this is the kind of the the master ingredient to all salt recipes if you are going to do fragrance oils essential oils anything like that to me this is a must it is in every bath salt that i do Okay, so we have the 200 grams of that. So into this, we are going to mix in our carrier oil, which I am using um, hemp seed. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, um, but this is a refined hemp seed, so it is a very light color. Um, this, it is not the dark green color because I am using lighter colored salts and the Himalayan salts and I don't want that to have that green color to it. I want it to look nice um, and not really glotchy. Um, it still has a lot of properties to it, not as good as the unrefined, but it's still a quality product in my mind. So I am going to use 30 grams of that carrier oil. Now you can use whatever carrier oil you like. Um, I would make sure that it is a light carrier oil that I'm not using anything super heavy like coconut oil or anything like that um, But you could use avocado oil you could use even uh, uh, Sweet apricot right kernel oil anything like that. You just want to make sure that it's light Okay, a lighter oil and then and you could absolutely use the unrefined. I just do this specifically because of color. I would prefer to use the unrefined myself, but this is a color thing. All right. And then I'm going to put in 15 grams of the polysorbate 80. And if you are going to use fragrance oils or you are going to use essential oils, um, in your bath products, whether that be a bath bomb, a bath salt, um, anything that you are putting fragrance oil in, um, even our carrier oils, but especially fragrance oils or essential oils. If you do not have something in there that is an emulsifier that is going to allow those fragrance oils and light oils to disperse into the water in the tub, you are going to have little balls of that pure essential oil floating around your tub and that can cause irritation to the skin um, and things like that, especially to any mucous membranes. So we wanna make sure in our bath products, we are using some sort of emulsifier and poly, a, polysorbate 80 is the go-to for bathtub um, soaks of any kind. Like I say, bath bombs, everything. We kinda go to that because it is the easiest um, and effective emulsifier to have that all right and we are going to put in our essential oil blend and with the essential oil blend i have 20 grams and this is my muscle and joint essential oil blend um, like i said i do have a video coming up to show you guys how to blend your own essential oils um, but you want to use um, stuff that's going to be effective for whatever purpose you have. So essential oils have so many different uses and there's so many different ways that you could make a muscle blend up. It really just depends. Um, but in here I do have um, eucalyptus, um, I have rosemary um, in here. So it's just a, a basic muscle and joint relaxant her essential oil blend. And we have 20 grams of that. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. And then we just want to make sure that this is mixed into this dendritic salt really well. We want it to be well mixed. This, so this dendritic salt really does hold a lot of moisture. Um, and it's really quite beneficial in a recipe like this. So you can see this is, this is quite damp. This is why I'm using 200 grams of this, um, in this recipe is it's really going to prevent this 
from becoming a gloppy solid mess in my bags or containers. So now that we got that really well mixed in there, I'm going to put in 100 grams of baking soda. This is going to help soften the water and also helps hold some of this moisture. Now, um, I use baking soda, but you could absolutely use, um, you could use a tapioca starch. Not one of my favorite things to use. You could use a cornstarch. There's Nutrisorb. There's um, different products like that that you can use to help to help hold on to some of this moisture. Um, but I'm choosing to use in this one and I find it works really well. I use other ingredients and other recipes because as time goes on, you play around, you figure out what works and then you like it one way, but then you try something else and you create a whole new recipe. So I've got multiple different recipes for different things. Um, and they just work that way for me. But we're going to put in 100 grams of baking soda and as I said, you could sub that out. Um, now obviously if you are using Nutrisorb, it is feather light, you're not going to use 100 grams, so you would have to figure out what you need. If you're going to change that ingredient, um, you are going to have different measurements. But it will help hold some of this moisture and it will also soften the water and bring some properties in there for that as well. So we let this mix this really well so that it's all combined. And then I have one more dry powder I'm going to add in here. And that powder that I'm going to add is going to be, of course, my Conan clay because you guys know that I love clays. I find clays in my bath products. And I mean, if I'm going for a color, if I wanted to color this, I could use uh, French pink clay. That would be perfect or I could use a French green clay since this has a, a eucalyptus and the rosemary in it. You could absolutely do that but I'm just going with the candlelight clay and I'm going to put in 20 grams of candlelight clay. And you guys just take your time mixing this up and making sure all of this is well mixed. This stuff all really helps your product. Um, if you try and shortcut it and it's not absorbed into here enough and you got lumps, well, you just get a whole mess. So we don't really want that. So just make sure that you're breaking up all the lumps, you got everything. And you can see like there's quite a bit of moisture in there, but it doesn't pack. All right, now we're going to move on to our salts. Now, of course, uh, one of the leading salts in muscle relief is your Epsom salts. Um, Epsom salts really aren't a salt, um, but there is a whole lot of magnesium in it. And that magnesium is said to be able to absorb into your skin. Um, it opens up your pores, it's detoxifying. Um, so it can really alleviate, um, especially if there's lactic acid in the muscles and things like that, it's said to help uh, draw those lactic acids out and help with the healing process. So that's why we're using um, the Epsom salts. This is a very popular bath salt, especially for muscle relief. So we are actually using 600 grams of the Epsom salts and mine's just the medium um, grain. You could use coarse, um, but I find the coarse does take a, a lot longer to dissolve. Um, being magne mostly magnesium, it does dissolve quicker than say my Himalayan salts, um, which I will also add in in a little bit larger size. Um, but I go with the medium. You can get fine Epsom salts, you can get large Epsom salts, whatever your desire is. It just depends on what you want your salts to look like. So, but we are putting in 600 grams of that. And before I move on from there, I am going to get this very well mixed in here. I think I'm just going to go in with my hands at this point. And we want to just make sure that we get this all broken up. 
and the salt really does help with that. Now, Epsom salts is one of the famous clumpers of all salts. Um, so another thing that you can do with other bath salts, now with a muscle blend, I do suggest using the Epsom salts. It really is um, a fantastic ingredient for muscle relief. But in saying that, if you wanted something also that helps with less clumping, you could go with other salts that are less clumping. Um, Epsom salts really does bring a, draw a lot of moisture to it. So it is very famous for clumping. So you could go with um, large sea salt or different salts like that um, as well to help with that. If you're trying to do a different recipe that wasn't all, all about muscles, there's many different aromatherapies that you could do with this. The other salt we're going to add in is going to be um, dead sea salt. Now dead sea salt, and uh, it's kind of the coarse, I don't know if you guys can see that, um, variety of it. Now, dead sea salt brings into this recipe, it comes from one of the saltiest seas. So there's a lot more salt in there than sodium, so to say. So it's going to make that bathtub water super soft. Um, and I really love dead sea salt in my baths. If I find it very relaxing. Um, and since we're trying to relax muscles, I am putting dead sea salt in here. And the dead sea salt, sorry guys, um, I put in 400 grams of the dead sea salt. Um, it doesn't look like as much, but it's a way, it's a lot denser salt. Um, so then it does weigh a little bit more. Now you could use different salts. You don't have to use the same ones I am. Um, I use, God, there's so many different salts out there, but Use what you like. Now to add a little color to this so it doesn't just look like a plain basic salt, I am going to put in, and this is kind of a medium size, uh, Himalayan salts. Now Himalayan salts have so many trace minerals in them. Um, they really bring a lot to a bath soak. Um, there, It's probably one of the highest number of trace minerals in one salt. So it brings a lot of that different types of minerals and properties to this. Um, you know, when you're building your salt recipe, um, you could absolutely exchange these for anything else. So just look up the salt, look at what the properties bring to it and decide what you are going to you know, what you're looking for. Okay, so now that this is all mixed up, it's that simple, you guys. Um, I'm not going to bake this one, though, because I don't want to destroy my essential oils. So what I am going to do, however, because I do not want to package this yet, is I am going to pour this out. Just take your time to make sure that you've got it all mixed up well. Got a little bit more space here. Um, and you know, you could add green coloring to this. You could if you got it super dry. I mean, the one thing about botanicals is that they do love to change color in our salt. So if I wasn't making the baked variety, I probably wouldn't add botanicals. But this is more of a natural muscle healing um, aromatherapy recipe. So this is all that I'm going to add in here. I'm going to spread this out. Like so. Um, I do have it in my room with the dehumidifier going. I will come down here. Um, and the, what I want to dry out of here is some of the, the moisture out of the oils and the polysorbate 80. So this will dry quite a bit and I will wait 48 hours before I package this. Um, and it just becomes this dry powdery form. And it's that simple you guys. And I will package this 
I will put this on my shelf. I will let it dry overnight. I will then come back and I will stir it in the morning. I'll leave it dry with my dehumidifier running. Um, so I keep it about 40 in my soap room for humidity. I will leave it dry um, and then I will come back and stir it again at the end of the day and I will package it um, probably the following day. So anywhere between 24 to 48 hours is really going to depend on the humidity, um, things like that. But that is how simple this is. Um, you could add color to this if you wanted to. I just want it to be more of a natural product and I really don't find a natural color that I would like to add into this. This is just going to be specific muscle soak so and it's it's to be more on the natural side hopefully you guys gain some information um i do have a video coming up with um blending essential oils so look out for that make sure that you've subscribed and hit that bell so that you're notified when new videos are uploaded um, and i hope you guys have a great rest of your day